Hi, hello everyone. Welcome to today or tonight's AMA. Uh, my name is Justin Day Das. I'm a partner growth manager at BNB Chain, where I cover infrastructure projects. And I am very excited to introduce our guest, um, Alex Lee, who's the founder of Wombat Exchange, a hyper efficient multi chain stable swap. But before we go a little more into uh, what he does in his company, um, Alex, maybe you could, uh, for, for the audience, maybe give like a, a very brief introduction to, to you, your background, how you got into crypto. Oh, that's, that's great. Um, so I got into crypto way back then. Um, you know, I thought BTC was cool. You know, you see reports of a new kind of money. So, you know, I became interested in that. And then after that, um, after that, I just became, a, while working as like a software engineer, I became really interested in crypto, like mining and that kind of stuff. And then I think I bought ETH um, uh, maybe three, four or five years back. Actually, more than that now, probably six, oh, wow. seven years now. Yeah. So, so, and then after that, it just started blossoming and I just became, you know, infatuated with it. So, yeah. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Tiana, for host, helping host. And then, yeah, glad to introduce our project and talk about it a bit more. Awesome. So, we can dive right into it then. So, first question that we all got, we're all going to have for you is naturally, what are your thoughts on first generation uh, stable swaps like uh, Uniswap or Curve Finance? You know, I want to say uh, I like I love Curve, I love Uniswap, and I love all these like you know pioneers of the DeFi space. You know, um, genuinely speaking, I don't think there's anything cooler than an amalgamation of technology and math together. You know, that's what these projects uh, have done to an awesome level, you know, like, you know, Curve and Uniswap, they've changed the, the, the landscape of crypto and DeFi. You know, I can really see the future of DeFi if protocols like this came and became more and more mainstream, like when I when I used it. And, you know, at that point, after I started, I used it, my, did my first like swap there. I was like, wow, this is super cool. This has to be and it should be more mainstream, you know. You know, um, however, you know, as more and more stable coins began to list on their platforms, you realize, you know, they started to have all these major issues with like capital efficiency, mm -hmm. uh, scalability, and ultimately the most part like usability. You know, like um, I don't know how many of these viewers like use Curve, um, but even the most seasoned crypto traders and investors look at Curve and they're like, oh, you know, what's going on? Why is everything so complex? Why are there so many pools? Like, why, why is it like this? You know, like, like for example, if you go to a bank. Uh, they're not going to ask you to deposit in a pool, like split up your your funds into two different pools, and then put it in and stake it to get like all that kind of. But you know, for for people who use crypto, um, obviously it's become such a, a standard. But uh, but for people who are in traditional finance, want to go into crypto, this is this is new. This is like really complex. But why does that have to be so complex? And you know, like if you were here back when when these like first AMMs came out, everything was simply easy. You know, point and click, and that's that's that. And that's what really I envision DeFi to be like, and that's what I hope, and I sh and I hope like the change towards that, and that's what Wombat is. So, um, you know, when it comes to scalability and capital efficiency, that, you know, that's another aspect that I think Curve and these other protocols can improve. Uh, for example, you know, when someone deposits uh, USD into Curve, USDC into Curve, um, people, what 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 do you usually get out of it? You get like a three CRV LP token, right? But what is that a representation of? That's a representation of USDC. USDT and die. So basically someone who who put in USDC got exposed to USDT and die, which they didn't want to. And I don't think that's a correct way to handle all this kind of stuff because you know if if a new person came in and be like, oh I, I put in like a US dollar, but suddenly you get a basket of other things. That's like, oh wow, why are you doing this to me? I don't to me that's not that doesn't make a lot of sense. So so by no volition in your control, you're expected to be exposed to these other stable coins. And I think it's silly and I want to change that. So, you know, Curve's algorithm does have issues because they need to make tons of meta pools to create. That's why it's so com complicated. But so because of these complex designs, um, it's really silly because on Curve, you actually can't swap directly between like TUSD and BUSD because they don't have a pool like that that connects it. But with Wombat, we can actually fix all of that. So that's 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 me. But, uh, you know, but I love Curve. I love Uniswap because they are literally the pioneers for what Wombat has become right now. So. Curve and Uniswap, yeah. <laughs> yes, I, I definitely agree. You know, from my understanding, uh, decentralized exchanges are still a very nascent area, and the potential for growth in this space is just so exponential. I mean, uh, Uniswap and and PancakeSwap themselves have like what over 
uh, 40 to 50 percent of the total market share, don't they? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's an incredible transition, and we're going to see more very exciting players coming up in the space. Now, before we go into uh, further questions, so that was just a backdrop. Now, let's actually take a look at your product. Would you uh, would you be happy to demo um, you know the UI and how it works? Yeah, for sure. Um, let me share my screen for you guys. So, um, share screen. So if you can see it, so basically Wombat is, we, we basically have simplified everything. So for example, you go in and you want to swap like $10,000 like uh, BUSD and you, that's what you get back. And you can see basically you get, you get a, a pretty good slippage rate. And, and, and like I mentioned before, um, when people want to use, uh, and in traditional banking, when they deposit something, they don't want to be forced to like, for example, they want to deposit BUSD. They don't want to have to split up uh, BUSD into USDC into a liquidity pool. But Wombat's design, basically, you can go in uh, with your BUSD, deposit it, uh, or so I don't have any in this account right now, but you approve it and deposit, and basically that's it. So when this happens, this is basically, um, uh, it, we simplified everything. So if you go to Curve right now, it looks very complex. It's not user-friendly. And I think this is what DeFi needs to go to the next level for people to make everything simple. And I think in order to make it simple, you need a simple UX. And I think that's what Wombat provides. So on top of, um, you know, staking and boosting and providing liquidity, you know, the things people use like stable coins for is really, you know, like stability, really. That's literally stable coins, right? The people want pegged assets. They want like probably like a, a stable income. And and this is what Wombat wants to simplify as well. So why, why should something so simple be so complex? Like, why do I need to, like, you know, juggle all these coins, juggle all these things to get, you know, I, you know, literally the users just want to, you know, stake BUSD. I want yields. That's all I want. I want to simplify it. So Wombat does that because so we have, oh, this actually isn't released yet. So we are releasing it at our probably end of July when we go launch our token. So basically when users come in, um, they have a swap, they have a pool. And if they want to boost, basically, they if they have Wombat tokens, they're able to lock Wombat tokens to ensure like higher API yields, uh, participate in different governance, uh, get different airdrops, and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's kind of like a boost if you're like invested in our system. That's sort of all the things you get, like you hire APYs, all that kind of stuff. So we simplified everything as well. Uh, people have a choice to see how long they want to stake it. So, you know, it, it is a choice. So obviously, we do incentivize people to stake it longer because, you know, you're invested longer. But as a result, we don't penalize people for coming in late. Uh, we don't penalize um, people, um, you know, you know, because that, that, that's the issue. Like, uh, you notice a lot of high APY yields for a lot of these, like, um, stake, staking protocols. Initially, it's very high, and then it and it tapers off, right? So, basically, these kind of benefit people who are in the know, who knows it earlier, who, like, has inside information. But but people who come in later, like, why, why do these people get, like, you know, the short end of the stick? So Walmart's design is basically we make it so that, you know, people stick it longer instead. So then that's that's what the people we value more. So it makes it more fair, more transparent, and just easier. So obviously, um, this isn't released yet, but basically we simplified everything. And later on, when we have um, our, our side pools, this will have all tons of more, more different stable coins, algo stable coins and things. And obviously, it's going to be more, you know, there's more going to be more products into it. So here... Um, we have you're able to select your tokens, calculate how much you deposit, how much you need to stake to get that kind of yield you want. So basically, it becomes simple. Like so, and, and I mean, in compared to Curve, um, you know, I a lot of my friends are actually are into you know investing in DeFi, but even then, when they look at Curve, it's it's too complex for them. So with Wombat uh, launching probably end of July, it's going to be much more simple. And so you know, everybody, it becomes more inclusive in my opinion. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for sharing more about the design. Um, so I know we touched a little bit about um, kind of what the first generation stable swaps uh, look like. Um, now, after highlighting that and getting a better picture of, what, of how your product functions, um, the first question I'm going to have on top of that is um, like, Taking the perspective of the, um, the the way Wombat is structured uh, or or its design, what what kind of problems um, what would does it address um, compared to some of the more traditional uh, dexes? Like if if you could like um, 
um, like structure that a little more clearly, but because we, we went a little bit back and forth for our audience. Oh, so yeah, uh, that's a great question. So um, in the traditional DEXs, there is what we call fragmented liquidity. Actually, I think the best thing to do is show share a deck actually, and I can probably go through it quickly with you guys. Let me do that right now, share screen. So in a, in in the traditional, um, can you see the screen right now? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, if if you, in the traditional um, uh, lines mines in the traditional, for example, in Ethereum, you know, uh, Curve is actually the highest DVL protocol. It is super important because it's a foundation of everything. But unfortunately, all these designs is very inefficient, hard to use. And sorry, one second. Okay. So what we, we know is like there's a main pain points for traditional stable swaps 1.0. Uh, we call them fragmented liquidity. Uh, there's scaling issues and poor UI. And the fact that everything else in this world is almost just a curve fork is really all it makes all these problems like um, basically extrapolated throughout every chain because everything just forks curve. Um, uh, what is fragmented liquidity? For example, uh, fragmented liquidity is one of the things like, for example, if you have if you like curve, you have two different types of pools. You have a USDT and a US and a DAI pool and a USDT and USDC pool, correct? So these are these are these are separated. So what is the issue with this? Because we know that in any um, stable swap or any AMM, the larger the pool, the better the slippage we have for the end user, right? So basically, the bigger the pool, uh, the user who swaps gets better rates. That, that that's a reality. But because in like curves design, we have like separated the USDT and separated pools. That means the USDT can't be used and pulled together for the most efficient capital use. So that's a problem, right? So you, ha you have all this capital that, that can actually benefit the end user, but you really can't because you're limited by their, their design. So the other issue is, uh, so Wombat actually is, um, so I'll go through Wombat solutions after, so it's probably better. So, so um, one of the issues with, like I mentioned with Curve and all these designs is that they have like very low scale of, low scalability and becomes complicated so if you look at um uh curve and you look at like ellipsis they they basically ellipsis is, is a fork of curve you look at uh curve and you see that you have like a, a pool of mim plus three crv uh die plus usdc plus usdt ust plus three crv so when someone looks at this like i mentioned before it's complicated right so like so a user like you introduce your friend to to use um uh this curve and you tell them, oh, just deposit your, you know, your USDC. And they'll look at this and be like, oh, uh, so what do I do? You know, it, it, it does, it's not intuitive. It's not, it's not conducive for people to, to use and just, and, and just in general, right? And if you want something to get game match adoption and we proved, and Apple with their iPhone has shown that if you make it simple, easy to use direct, that's what increases adoption. And that's why, you know, everyone is holding an iPhone right now. And I want DeFi to be like that too. So we need to solve, this is another issue that Curve currently has. So um, so because of these things, like Wombat has like found out like tons of solutions to uh, mitigate all these issues. And obviously we made it seem like easier than it is, but you know, under the hood, we have a lot of math, a lot of algorithm that we fixed to be able to do this. So it wasn't easy, but I mean, thanks to our team, our, our hardworking team, we're able to do that. And so basically under the hood, all the complex stuff, we simplified it so the user doesn't have to deal with that complexity. So we, since we solved that, that's, that's, that's what we solve. Um, and, you know, just in general, I, I think DeFi just solves so much in the traditional space. I think you know, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing in my opinion. It really is. So I, I understand uh, from your presentation that, uh, you know, your, your design and the way that it is structured uh, really helps the uh, let's say for example early retail users or, or first adopt uh, sorry like recent adopters um, of uh, decentralized exchanges really have a very clear walkthrough and have a better understanding on the kind of uh, intuitive um, kind of uh, trades that they will need to execute compared to you know the, the complexities of traditional dexes um, yeah. now to to further simplify that um, which I'm actually a little bit more curious about stable swap um this is something that uh, i have not heard of in the past uh something came up very recently and in addition to that stable swap 2.0 uh, so for our audience uh if you would kindly elaborate a little bit more uh, around what you think the concept is about 
or how you would define that a little more accurately? Yeah, so StableSwap, um, um, and, you, and you mentioned StableSwap 2.0. So StableSwap is uh, a, a DEX that actually focuses on uh, pegged assets. For example, USDT, BUSD, USDC, all that kind of stuff. And this is a reason why, why did Curve um, evolve or come out of like Uniswap? Uniswap came first and there's Curve. Because uh, during the swap and the AMM curve, they realized that you know pegged assets behave differently. There's less volatility, so excuse me. So there's because there's less volatility, we can actually tweak the curve to be more capital efficient. So this is the reason curve came about um, because they realized uh, behavior so of behaviors of pegged assets, and this is why because you know. Um, I don't know if many realize, but you know, stable coins are actually the foundation and like the, the foundation for crypto and DeFi. If you look at like uh, bridges, uh, like wormholes by like uh, by wormholes, like all these bridges, uh, layer zero. What do they do? They just swap stable coins, right? Because honestly, um, if someone bridges ETH over to BNB chain, it doesn't make any sense. There's no use. But if you bridge stable coins, that's another story, right? So bridges like DeFi world is really made for stable coins that's why there's so many attempts for people to make algo stable coins because you know there is a use case for it um you know um i love DeFi genuinely um there is a use case uh, i hope there is a future for algo stable coins even though we had just like you know the whole ust kind of fallout and all that kind of stuff but you know the the idea of uh working algo stable coin is a beautiful thing because you know you're not um, you remove that systemic risk from like a traditional kind of thing. Um, and I think that's 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 the thing. So what is StableSwap 2.0 to me? Um, StableSwap 2.0 to me is, you know, re-envisioning what a StableSwap should be, you know. You know, like, even though it's it's 2.0, but unironically, it's going back to the early days of DeFi and making things simple again. That is what I envision. You know, in a world where, you know, this world is getting more complex, people are trying to make things more complex. But I take the other approach. You know, I want to say, you know, this is a more user-oriented approach to make things easy to use for the user. Math is complicated, um, but you know that's our job at Wamba to make sure the algorithm is sound for the end user, making sure it's easy. And you know, the beautiful thing about math is like, you know, math is real. Math is math never lies. You have, and you know, if like for me, uh, I love crypto more than traditional finance because traditional finance is really. They believe in gold and gold and all oil. That's they're just rocks to me. But math, crypto is crypto is math. And if you ask a math nerd like me to choose between a rock and like a rock and math, I'd always choose math. And I believe in math. So, you know, to me, um, sales up to like two point to me is is a simplicity adoption of the masses, um, not through a middle person, um, uh, not through like a middle person platform like CD5, but generally easy to use for the masses that can log in because that's the purpose of CD5, right? Because like, I think like Celsius and all these guys, they want to make it so that like users can, uh, they want to break through that kind of barrier for people to use, right? Because like your traditional person who wants to get into DeFi or crypto, like Celsius was the easiest thing to use. Like uh, undoubtedly, I mean, I think they, they were very successful at it, but why can't DeFi be as simple? I think that, that, that that's the thing that gets me going. Like, I think DeFi can be simple. And, you know, um, I want it to be generally easy for the masses so they can log in, be able to do all the staking, swapping of their own volition, you know, their own choice and be able to do it in a free way. And we can generally call it financial freedom. So StableSoft 2.0 point to me is the idea that we can increase the efficiency of what we do to enable better rates for the end user because, you know, um, uh, like a bit candid, but, you know, I came from a little middle class family. And the reality is that, you know, every dollar matters. And I know it does matter for like, you know, you see the Luna fallout. Most of the people that got affected were, you know, people who stake just a little bit of money. And then it doesn't make sense that DeFi is only for whales. DeFi should be for everyone. And I and I emphasize that a lot. You know, I don't want the end user to lose more in swapping than they should because, you know, the money can be spent in places where it can make a difference, you know, like investing or buying more food on the table. And that's as genuine as I mean for stable saw 2.0. And that's what I, I see in it. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, the, the value behind it, especially for retail users, um, is really strong. I mean, compared to these crazy, uh, well, not crazy, but substantially higher exchange fees that we're seeing on centralized exchanges. This really brings so much more, you know, um, accessibility and, and ease of use for general 
newbie, low, um, low income people who are just beginning to kind of explore uh, financial stability or, or making money work for you, basically. Um, so we touched a little bit about, um, you know, pegged assets, uh, gold, uh, pegged to gold, pegged to currency, uh, pegged to algorithmic uh, algorithms, algorithmic, algorithmic stable coins. Now, um, I want to take a little a little look deeper and kind of understand um, for stable swap 2.0 from a value uh, proposition perspective down to the structure and, and technical side. Um, how does it benefit uh, DeFi users um, as a whole? If, if you if you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Um... It does. I mean, uh, like I mentioned, like a, a bit before, like so, stable swap two. It's important to DeFi because you know we all know there's issues with like a CFI. There's a lot of issues with CDFI, obviously, with the whole situation going on right now. You know, users like really need to understand to managing their finances, right? You know, there are tons of systemic risks in traditional finance, and this is why DeFi was born. And you know, even though DeFi was born to help bridge these worlds, um, there are so many risks that we have seen currently in the news. This is, you know, this is where like DeFi uh, stable swap 2.0 comes in. You know, users have been unchained. Uh, you know, they're able to do things on their own volition, stay control their own assets. Of course, you know, um, you know, a lot of people may say like, oh, you know, Web three has a lot of smart contract risks, um, but that's why Wombat has everything audited with like very high scores. I might add, uh, you know, we also publish a code to, to the public for people to review. Um, you know, you know, we have seen why. So, so why is it? Why is a stable swap 2.0 important? Um, uh, we have seen the importance of Curve on the Ethereum ecosystem, and it makes sense because you know stable coins, like I mentioned, are a fundamental part of crypto in terms of pricing, transaction. You know everything evolves around stable coins, like like I mentioned. So Wombat is basically the answer to Curve on the BNB chain. So you know I believe we can fully be that because you know the, the ecosystem in in the BNB chain has an amazing amount of daily active users, and you know DeFi is nothing without its users. Um, that can benefit, that, you know, these users can benefit from Walmart's simplicity. Builders can benefit from the Walmart sim simplicity. You know, uh, the one of the things is like, like I mentioned, like BNB has super low gas fees and that, which is great for the end user. Like I don't want to pay like, you know, a hundred dollars for like uh, to a transaction on like on, on Ethereum. It just doesn't make sense. You know, you ask me like, you know, back in a poor, poor, broke university student to pay a hundred dollars for like gas. Like, I, sorry, man, I, I really, really can't. But, you know, why can't I start investing and doing all this stuff when I don't have an all, a lot of money? When this is the chance. BNB is cheap. It is for the users. And that's that's why I believe, you know, it's it's important. So, you know, um, so why is it good for DeFi users? So the the I always use uh, the reference on Curve because I love Curve. I love what ha what it does. But it's really become so institutional. For But for DeFi users, it's too expensive. But what has Curve brought? It brought a convex, like voted, Votify, and all that. All these kind of great projects that build upon to give the users, the DeFi users, like the end goal to be able to make decisions. You know, um, um, you know, and having something like a found, good foundation has, like, you know, sped up the development of ingenious projects, like I mentioned before, and other yield aggregating protocols. You know, like Walmart simplicity, or rather, you know, stable swap, stable swap 2.0 simplicity enables even more seamless and simple foundation for people to build on, to build, you know, the next convex from for Wombat, to build a, you know, more efficient borrowing lending for Wombat. So at the end, you know, it makes it so that it's more accessible, it's more free, more transparent for the end user. Um, simple example, if you, if you, if I would like to, so a lot of people like they lend out LP tokens. So when they lend out LP tokens, so they'll lend out like a, maybe a three CRV LP token, like I mentioned, but you know, a lot of boring lending protocols, they don't want to be exposed to, you know, like for example, USDT, but they can't do that in the tradition, but for Wombat, because we have single token staking, you deposit one token, you get a single pure LP token. So basically all these boring lending protocols, they can just get one pure LP token that's not exposed to anything other risks. And you can do like very organic lean lending and borrowing and that's to me that that's one of the things that people benefit from and you know more efficient borrowing and lending or it adds more and stimulates you know the whole ecosystem and that just works better yeah that's true um appreciate you addressing my question directly uh for you know the benefits for the end users uh not to mention better uh efficiency with uh, with the use of lp tokens um speaking of uh tokens um 
Well, one, one question that I've been asked uh, recently by, by a colleague is, um, you know, we, we were looking into Wombat before this AMA. Um, so you have a VE token model or, or V token model. Um, would you elaborate a little bit more about uh, what that is and how it's different from uh, existing ones? Oh, that's a great question. So my approach for Wombat has always been a few things. Like I emphasize it to our team a lot. Like it has to be simple has to be easy to understand and it has to be fair um, because that's literally what Wombat is about and that's what I hold dear. So Wombat's V token design is a very simple one. So as we men mentioned before, we wanted to give users a choice. Um, so like I mentioned a bit, so most project, projects out there, in my opinion, are kind of Ponzi in the sense that, you know, it really benefits two groups of people, the super early adopters and the whales. So what about later joiners? You know they're hit with like lower returns but that's not fair like i i really hate that you know but you know the early joiners they get like super high apy and they're like oh yeah yeah and i got out i dumped on you but that's i think that's that's stupid that's not a sustainable kind of design that's not that's not something that's like conducive to building DeFi. like uh, to me DeFi, like when someone says DeFi is a, is a scam i it, it hurts me because i it changed my life and i hope it changes more people's lives man um so so Wombat approaches it differently in the sense that, you know, we don't want to penalize users who come in later, but we reward users who, you know, stake longer. So that's one of the things that's very different. So users can choose that they can stake a minimum seven days to four years. And and this is actually very powerful because, you know, um, uh, when you're able to calculate uh, for um, the decay of a staking and all that kind of stuff, it's actually very good for projects that build on top of Wombat because they can actually calculate and forecast and all that kind of stuff. So this becomes very powerful for these projects that build on top of Wombat. So they don't have to, they can actually properly forecast and give proper yields and all that kind of stuff to the end user. So, you know, so this lets people have a choice. This lets like product, like products that build on top of Wombat have a choice. This lets like, you know, even institutions have a choice of what they want to stake, what they want to do. And also, you know, um, that that's the main thing. So curve up before, um, uh, they only let you stake like one, two, three, four years. I think they changed it recently to like seven days minimum. But Wombat has always been, um, you know, we want to let people have try for seven days. You know, like, uh, you know, I grew up uh, a lot in Canada. You know, we can always like we can always like go to a place and try it. You know, and, you know, it lets people give people the confidence, right? Like, why wouldn't you want someone to try your protocol, right? So that's why we shortened it to seven days so people can try. And. And one of the things that makes Wombat very, very different from every other protocol is that basically when when you're in using Curve and you want to stick seven days and you want to extend it, um, you're only able to extend your current one. But Wombat, like basically we can do it multiple stakes in parallel so you can have a choice. Maybe you have some portion of your, your staking that you want to only lock in for a few days because you want, you want to maximize your efficiency. Or, but you actually have another portion where you want to stake it longer. So we have that choice that this your user account can actually do stagger types of staking to affect you know how much you want to stake how much volume you have and you know it gives people a choice i don't want to be like her where you know it locks on for four years and you can't do anything about it but you know i want to give people a trust if you want to do four years fine but you don't have to do it all you can do you know portions of it and i think that's what wombat's uh, v e token model is very different because i really thought about it like in the perception of the end user, you know, I don't want you to lock in your your life savings for the best yields. I want you to be able to choose, and freedom of choice, I think, is the most. Um, it's it's a very beautiful and sought after thing that people take for granted, and I, that's what I want to provide the DeFi users. Yeah, I, I noticed um, a pattern more recently where um, some of these centralized exchanges have also been starting to slice down. Um, you know, their lockup periods. I've seen some down to even, you know, one month, two weeks. And, you know, this really uh, brings up naturally the question about, um, you know, what does what the competitive landscape look like? And, you know, just a ver very general, like, overview on who your main competitors are and, you know, in, in what aspect are you really competing head-to-head -head with? Oh, um, yeah, that's a great question. So a lot of uh, competitors of us are obviously Curve is um, obviously in every other core Curve fork in the ecosystem, which is almost abundant of them. Um, BNB chain, it's Ellipsis, obviously. I believe Belt is another stable kind of aggregating swap platform. 
um, obviously on Avalanche, um, they have a platypus. Um, but you know, on but you know, we're focused on BNB. Uh, so our you know our competitor is Ellipsis. They have, uh, you know, they I, I like I, I have no qualms against them. I love Curve. Uh, but you know, I think in terms of like swap fees, like if you look at wombats, what you can get are the swaps. We're like we're massively more efficient. Um, I think at that point, uh, Wombat only had $20 million TVL. And I think Ellipsis had like, I don't know, like three, 400. And we have better swap rates than them. So it proves how how much more efficient we are. So I think that's really cool. So um, one of the things about that is um, we're able to do more with less. And I think that's very powerful. Um, you know, kind of like a David and Goliath kind of thing. Uh, that's what I kind of see Wombat is. Um, but the difference between Wombat uh, if it obviously it's very clear if you use it, we're much simpler. We simplified everything. So I think, um, you know, we're very different in that kind of sense. So um, can we say we're really competitors? Uh, yeah, in, because we're obviously fighting for like uh, stable coins and TVL. But I think Wombat's ex ex user experience is, uh, you know, second to none, I think. And I think that's important, you know, taking after Steve Jobs, having a very simple, direct, easy to use thing is, is a, it's a, it's you know the composition of what something long lasting and successful should be, and that's I think that's what Wombat brings to the table. Awesome, thanks for narrowing uh, narrowing it down to uh, Texas specifically. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't mention that part. Um, so I have another question for you. Uh, this has more to do with um, kind of you know uh, your your project moving forward. So you know we all understand that. Some of the biggest highlights in DeFi as, as far back as uh, 2020 was actually uh, the Curve Wars. Now, um, what, what are your opinions on this? And along the lines of, can we expect something similar um, that will happen in, in Wombat as well along um, the topic of Curve Wars? The Curve Wars, I love it. Um, I think that is the coolest thing that happens because, you know, um, you know, there's a few things, you know, besides, uh, you know, like you're fighting to change, you know, like people are grouping together kind of like, I would say maybe like in guilds to like, and I think that's, that's really how life is, you know, people separate into the, like, like, um, their own cliques, their own like groups and that kind of stuff to like fight for what they believe in and change what they think is right. And I think that's cool. I, I don't think there is an, anything more, anything like less DeFi or more DeFi than than this literally you'd be able to you know pull together with people like-minded vote for things change things and you know and like steer things to how it is and i think that's a that's that's DeFi, and i love it there's um there is there's nothing cooler to me so um so will that will something happen with wamba yes uh for sure. So there are we're, there's already five to eight projects that are building on top of Wombat. I have approached me and I we vetted them to build on top of Wombat, which you know I believe will add a new dimension to the BNB chain space. You know um, we've seen it with the Curve Wars, it only increased the TVL, but you know it got people you know passionate about DeFi, and I think that's that's a that's a big plus in my books. And and we also must realize that you know competition is great, and that's why. You know, DeFi has made so many improvements, made so many jumps and in, in, in changes into to the space, you know. And the importance of the wars that lets users decide what to do with their yields and decisions within the protocol, you know, you know, like I mentioned, joining forces with like-minded individuals. To me, in my opinion, freedom should be free. And that's what, you know, we're hoping to bring back to DeFi, especially with a great strong landscape like BNB chain. Um, BNB chain, second in TVL, I think that's 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 that speaks volumes right now. Um, that's why it's super strong. Um, so besides that, you know, like because we're ex we're bringing you guys an innovative side pool design, a lot of different stable coins and pegged assets to our platform. You know, when we enable our DAO, all these protocols that build on top of like Wombat will basically have a all out war to fight for governments enabled the direction they want for the protocol. And and the thing about Wombat is because we're so simple, uh, it makes it easy for them to build on top and change things that they want to. They so. You know, with like, I think the coolest thing is that, like, on on Ethereum, uh, you know, a lot of the things are voted by you know small groups of people. But you know, with the beauty of with BNB chains, that there's so many users, and when people have the ability to do that, I think it's it, you can see the the beauty and essence of DeFi even more because there's more people that are able to choose, more people able to vote, and that's what you know that's what DeFi wants to strive towards: more users, which Binance has, and more people vote, which I'm sure. Like BNB chain users are very passionate about what they want to do with their money. 
That's true. Thank you for elaborating a little bit more on on the curve wars and what's going to look like for Wombat moving forward. Now, um, you know, obviously, I asked a couple of questions, and I would like to take this time as we're kind of nearing the end um, to open the floor for any any questions that you will have. Um, no, please feel free to drop it. Uh, I'm currently looking at the YouTube comments as well. Uh, please feel we have a, we YouTube have a YouTube comment. <laughs> yeah, we, we're we're live on YouTube as well. I believe oh, Twitter. Did not know that. <laughs> I yeah. did not know that. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'm looking through some of the questions right now. And um, here's an interesting one. Um, so JR says, we have recently witnessed uh, the deep peg of stable coins, right? Is there a criteria to select these stables in Wombat? Oh, that's a fantastic question. So yeah, we, we do. So um, we have a main pool um, that we have... Uh, 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 USDT, USDC, DAI, and BOC. Basically, they're kind of centralized, but you know they're battle tested and proven. Um, they're not going anywhere. They're solid. Um, and then we all have uh, what we call. I'm kind of giving out too much information, but I'll do it anyways because I, I love you guys. Um, so we have a side pool. We're gonna in integrate more more different types of stable coins there. And these were we kind of deem as um, not as battle tested. So they will have like obviously. Um, different types of like requirements to be filled in. For example, uh, will they have liquidity? How long have they been up? How you know how have they fared in the moments of like a fud, like when people like try to peg it? So all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we'll actually have. I haven't really thought of a name for this pool yet, where I'm I'm I kind of want to call it Dgen pool just for the fun of it. So this will have a lot of algo stable coins. So the beauty of having these separate pools, like they they basically segregate the risk. And when we segregate the risk, it basically protects the users who provide LPs. Because to be honest, like my, my t designing Wombat, I don't want to just, you know, have the best slippage because that's, that's, there's meaningless. Like when I design Wombat, I want it to be able to protect users to put money, their hard earned cash into the, the platform, right? Um, so the criteria is really how long has it been? What's backing it? What's, um, uh, we'll, we'll go through the audit. We'll, we'll, like our team will audit the code ourselves, making sure everything's like it's safe, it's um, protected from like, maybe like flash loans, that kind of stuff. You know, is there is there a is there a, a way like UST that you can cause a DPEG? And and because of that, like we probably wouldn't have listed UST in the main pool, maybe not even in the side pool. Um, but even if uh, we have a DPEG. Uh, actually, our algorithm using the coverage ratio method will actually protect the users. So there's actually a, 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 a limit to how much LPs do lose, but that will also be, um, you know, controlled by our, our, our you know, our platform. So uh, first we go through, uh, so in some, in short, we go through, uh, we analyze, you know, how long they've been, are they, are they stable? Uh, on top of that, we, uh, we will only start them off in our kind of like our weakest quote unquote degen pool. And obviously the people who, you know, people who own Wombat, they can vote to like promote it into like a side pool. Um, but yeah, that obviously takes a lot of voting, a lot of like a lot of battle testing. And on top of that, we have actually like caps for all these like uh these kind of like these like degen stable coins or algo stable coins to prevent like mass losses. So um yeah, so we have tons of criteria. So we'll probably release all of that uh, very soon on our website. So stay tuned. So yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, just just to recap, you're you're launching in July, is that right? That's correct. That's correct. Uh, originally, we wanted to launch launch the end of June, but because of marketing conditions, I think it, uh, we went through. We talked to a lot of our, our investors and parties like involved. They just think it's probably best if we just held off a bit and let the market kind of absorb the kind of news before we, we launch. That's reasonable. A <laughs> um, couple more questions. Okay, we, we... Here's something interesting. So as... Uh, it, it, it's a good question. Um, definitely, retail users should always uh, be aware of. So as, as a DeFi protocol, um, security is one of the most critical factors to success. Is Wombat secure to use? Are there any security measures being implemented to avoid bugs and hacking? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I, I think, um, like I mentioned, like Web two has systemic risk. Um, what the thing about Web three is a smart contract risk. So, um, you know, we are constantly uh, uh, 
we have a bug program going on in Unify that's actually people are submitting bugs. Um, fortunately, nothing serious. Um, but you know, we have already our Spark contract by three times by three great um, security articles, Zokio, uh, Peck Shield, and Hacken. You know, we've gotten great, um, great comments on them. We've got great scores. And actually, moving forward, we're actually still continuing getting our code audited as we go go on. So you know, to me, um, like I mentioned, uh, security is is you know it's, it's important because uh, I I built Wombat because I want to make it for people to use. And that's one of the criteria is that you don't get hacked, right? You obviously get hacked, you know, it affects a lot of people. That's something I would, I would be devastated. I don't want anyone to get hacked. I want people to use it safely. And actually that's one of the reasons why I made Wombat super simple. You know, the more simple it is, the less like chances people to attack. And, you know, like the more complex the kind of design is that that's what really causes like, you know, these attack vectors, right? So when Wombat becomes like simple and easy to use, that's where we protect our users, you know, in, from the starting room, from the design, from our security audits to, you know, being continuously aware of what uh, the new like bugs are like with Immunify and getting like security audited like constantly. I think that's that's the road to, you know, doing a lot of preventative measures to protect our end users. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Tim. Um, are there any more questions you would like to raise from the panel? Well, that should be it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's about the uh, finishing mark as well. Well, you know, now you know about Wombat Exchange. Please feel free to follow them on Twitter. Keep up to date with their uh, most latest developments. Feel free to use them once they launch. And uh, once again, thank you very much, Alex, for coming on to this AMA. Um, you've really shared a lot of insight about uh, you know how the decentralized exchange world works. Um, what um, you guys are doing at uh, Wombat. Incredible innovation and very excited for future developments in this space. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. Thanks, Sienna, for your time. And thanks, everyone who paid attention. Um, yeah, we're going to continue to keep building. And then, yeah, thanks. Thanks for the support, guys. Thank you, everyone.